my good friend James Pesh. Hey guys. Um, and we had the notion of talking about goals for the holidays. I want to kind of change that up a little bit, uh, last for the moment thing that I wanted to do, and just talk about why you're not achieving your goals, regardless of whether or not it's the holidays, because that was the initial sure. intent. It's the holidays, why aren't you reaching your goals now, or what can you do to... Tips to get through. Tips to get through. Right. Let's be real, if you're struggling now, you're most likely going to struggle at any other time of the year, right? Right. So, what are the things to navigate that? But before we get into that, um, we've done a podcast, uh, we train at the facility together, we've done all these things, but for anybody that doesn't know, James, quick one minute, what you do, why sure. it's going to be a value to anybody that's watching. Absolutely. So, I have certification in neurolinguistic programming, I have a background in linguistics, I have personally uh, lost and kept off over 100 pounds. Uh, from 2012 to 2018, so that's six years most of the time. Yeah. Uh, weight loss of over 100 pounds lasts less than two years. So anybody who's able to keep off weight and maintain for longer than two years is considered a success case. Yeah. In this day and age, most of the biggest loser winners, we have zero success cases maintained 100 plus pounds of weight loss off. They don't get it. Most of them gain it back to where it's under that 100 pound mark. Yeah. Now that's a nonsensical, trivial thing, yeah. but it is a category that we keep in mind. So yeah. I have accomplished that. That's a success aspect. Uh, I have competed in and accomplished triathlon, a marathon, and most of these things have all been based upon the mentality and mindset of goal development and achievement. Gotcha. That's awesome. Yeah. And uh, before we run that way till the end, if anybody wants to find you, I'll have to link in the, yeah. the description box, but where can they find you? jamespesh.com is currently under construction, but it has all my information. Okay. Um, Facebook.com forward slash Mind Ninja JP, and my kid gave me that name, Mind Ninja, Mind Ninja, and I have just stuck with it because yeah. honestly, when I do this and the education and teaching this, it comes from so many different aspects yeah. that I just thought teaching this from a standpoint of neurolinguistics doesn't do it justice. Yeah. So I had to fully encapsulate and say, I can teach you why humans act. Yeah. That's it. That's it. I can tell you why they go from a position of not acting to acting. Yeah. That's it. I can tell you the science behind it and I can tell you how linguistics works to create storytelling memories that will make people connect those memories to future goals, beliefs, desires, yeah. all sorts of things through their own yeah. language. Yeah. They create these things all I do is show them the patterns that they've used to create them, and we establish them, layer them in for anything they want for the rest of their lives. It really is that simple. So this is where I love uh, any of the people I love to follow, regardless of who it is, Eric Thomas, Gary Vee, Twitter, whoever. Yeah. Like, they're strategists. Like, yes. Don't demean what I do because uh, you say that I'm a motivational speaker. Right. Don't right. call it's, me a life coach. Right. It's greater than that. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. There's more than that. Yeah, and it's I think human that's, behavior in general. Yeah, that's what you're bringing to the table, right? So that's, that's right. where it's really right. important with what we're talking about today, which is um, if, if we have a goal navigating to get there and some yes. of the things that are holding you back. Right. I think the, the big one I've been fascinated with right now is like your opinion of, or your worry about other people's opinion if yes. you fail. Yes. Right? Okay, so failure isn't something I can control, ultimately. Yeah. Failure is something that will come to all of us in some capacity. Yeah. Here, that's life. That's life. That's life. But what I can do is I can take people from a place of what they want to feel. Yeah. People want to feel awesome. Yeah. They really do. That's ultimately what I found is the driving force behind most of the reason people contact me is they want to feel awesome. Yeah. So what I do is I realize that human instinct, that desire to yeah. feel awesome, to feel amazing. We all want it. Yeah. So what we do is that's our goal. Yeah. We put that as the goal and we never get it. So what I do is, I start to find out what you attach to awesomeness, greatness, yeah. goals, success. How do you define it? Yeah. Because most of the time, people don't sit down and define the goals. Yeah. They just know they want to feel awesome. They're going to head in this direction. and I want to feel awesome. Right. I know that. Yeah. So I'm going to go for that. And then I go, okay, what makes you feel awesome? I don't know. I just know I don't want to feel what I'm feeling now. Yeah. Great. Yeah. So then what, um, and I forgot exactly how I went, why I went down this path, but mainly what I found is that in, in trying to boil it down to the most central part, people can't develop goals because they want a feeling. Yeah. They want the feeling that all those goals are going to provide. Yeah. 
They can't create a clear goal because they're so hung up on the feeling that they want. They can't get a clear picture in their brain of goals. It's not clearly defined. No, yeah. never. Yeah. And so they can't get the awesome yeah. that's attached to the goal because they never could build the goal. Yeah. They, can, they can know what they want to feel. Yeah. They can tell you. And more they know what they don't want to feel anymore. Yeah. They know this really well. Yeah. I don't want to feel this. Yeah. What do you want to feel? I This thing that I want to feel doesn't look at all like this. Yeah. What does it look like? Not like this. Yeah. The opposite of the this. Opposite of this. <laughs> yeah. Okay, what is that? Not this. Yeah. Yeah. They just keep going back to this. Back. But I think that's the hold back part, which is what, we're, what the initial spark of that, which is like you're worried about what your mom says. Yes. What your friends say. Sure. And what your aunt, and I, I, I love watching Gary Vaynerchuk when he says, like, you're worried about your aunt's opinion of you who's miserable because she didn't get hers sure. to attain her goal. Right. You're worried about yeah. the person's opinion that didn't attain their goal. Correct. And what they're going to say if you don't reach yours. And the misery loves company, by misery the way. Misery loves <laughs> company. And the most important thing to remember is that your aunt, when she's telling you, you're probably going to fail. When she's yeah. saying those things like, hey, you shouldn't do this. You yeah. should do something else. She isn't talking to you. She's talking to her. She's talking to her. Yeah. She shouldn't do those yeah. things. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Aunt Mildred, you shouldn't. Right. You would fail. Yeah. I should. Yeah. I will, yeah. I am. Yeah. And that's the problem is that most often when people begin to get these doubts, you think that they're thinking about you yeah. when they're saying it. They're not. They're thinking about them. Yeah. They're not thinking about you. Yeah. And so then why would you take this moment to then think about them whenever you went into this conversation thinking about you and what you were going to do? Mm -hmm. They went into this conversation thinking about them and what they were going to do. Why would you now let them start to tell you what you're going to do? Yeah. Yeah. That doesn't make any sense. Yeah. They went into this conversation knowing what they yeah. believed and what they were going to do. So did you. Yeah. So why let them hijack now your momentum, your energy, your confidence, your ability to see the goal that you want? Why would you let them now hijack it with their opinion of what they would see themselves doing? Yeah. yeah. And I think that's just the bulk of what we're talking about content wise. If anybody's watching this, like, this is where you need to listen to the <laughs> that, right? Like, yes. Regarding that. I think that's a hard pattern to break, which is what you deal with, right? You, you have somebody who has a repetitive pattern, they're always going to go back to that yes. and they're stuck in that rut. One of the things that I, I think people need to lead with is, is when you're 90, right, and, and you're on your deathbed, you're not going to be thinking about your aunt was saying that you can't do this. Yes. You're going to be more upset with the fact that you didn't go do it. Like, because at that point, you don't have the option to, right? It's too late. Right. You're so with regret, and regret's going to suck. Regret is the worst. And the reason that regret is the worst is because as most of us start to age, and most of these people that you see who are gurus, life coaches, these different people, they're in their mid-30s. They've read a lot of stoic writings. They've yeah. read a lot of philosophy. They're on a journey. Yeah. They were seeking truth. Knowledge. Yeah. And what is it that makes people tick? They're on like human optimization. You see Tim Ferriss, you see yeah. Gary Vee, you see uh, Tony Robbins. All these guys are like, what makes it work? Yeah. What their goal is, is to find out why success is. Yeah. They're, they're gen genuinely, their success is coming from the search for success. Yeah. Why it happens, yeah. what makes it happen. When you start to analyze situations like that, you think Aunt Mildred sat down and wondered how yeah. to get success? Right. She's not the most educated person on this topic. Yeah. So what they do is they go and they start diagnosing who's got success. Yeah. And how are they achieving it? Success leaves clues. I think the other point with that too is like if I'm looking at that too, and now Aunt Mildred for <laughs> Yeah. Right? yeah. I was just a nod to right. They're saying like, hey, you can't do this. And I look and I say, well, you haven't either. Like, Correct. Why would I value that opinion? What exactly. it is, is it's just proximity. I go, well, you're a relation to me, so I should value your opinion. Yes. You haven't done that thing. Well, and that's categorically. So uh, what you're tapping into now is the psychology of why what I do works. Yeah. We are tribal. Yeah. We like right. our tribes. We like our categories. We yeah. like our people. Yeah. So what you're trying to do is when Aunt Mildred starts to tell you what it is you should and shouldn't yeah. do, she's trying to establish her position in your tribe. Yeah. As a person with wisdom, with knowledge, with knowledge, yeah. who thinks like you, yeah. we're family. Yeah. Obviously, we think a lot alike, so obviously you should listen to someone with wisdom like me. Yeah. No, Aunt Mildred, <laughs> not on the topic of oh, success. This. Not on this. Not on this one, because I've spent time, yeah. I've spent energy, I've dedicated my life's research yeah. to this thing. Yeah. I'm on this. Yeah. I'm passionate about this topic. Right. It makes sense now that you should listen 
to me. Which I think is why people hire a personal trainer, right? Exactly. You know, they're like, hey, you have the knowledge, let me seek that. Correct. The problem is that yeah. I see, and you, you see this too, is, is like, uh, let's say the female comes in, she wants to lose weight. It's like, man, my husband isn't on board. She says, I'm not going to, he says, I'm not going to make it. He says, he's not going to do the food with me. It's like, you know what I mean? Like, yes. they're trying to drag you down and keep you out of your Sure. Life. I think that whole, whoever you, your five closest associates or friends are, right, is going to dictate. Yeah. Success level, Absolutely, right? yeah. That's why we're saying, hey, don't listen to Aunt Mildred if she's saying that she's trying to pull you down. Move beyond that. Find somebody who's already done it. Somebody that's lost over 100 pounds, right? There you go. And it's going to be like, okay, they know what they're doing, right? Right. And I need to associate closer with that than my my friend that's saying, no, dude, you shouldn't do that. like stay down here with me. Let me exactly. drag you down. I'm sorry, but lose your your loser lose, friends. Lose, lose, your, lose your loser friends. And the reason that we say that is because we're pattern seeking private. Yeah. We begin to associate and familiarize with things that we associate and familiarize with. Yeah. As you begin to be more comfortable around people who speak that way, yeah. who speak very defeatist, very um, uh, mentalities and uh, mindsets that are more like, well, you know, things just don't work out. Yeah. Yeah, for you, they don't. Yeah, they don't. It's with amazing that yeah. how much things for you don't work out. Yeah. I've noticed that the more I get around people that things don't work out for, amazingly, they're right. Yeah. And it's amazing the people that things just do work out for. Yeah. The more you get around for them, for, the more you get around them, they're right. Yeah. Where focus goes, energy flows, as I think Tony exactly. said. Exactly. And it, like, really, it really doesn't come down to the fact that if you were to flip the quarter 20 times, yeah. that it fell on heads more time for this guy than it did for this guy. But the guy that flipped the quarter 20 times and it fell on heads 10 times, focused on all 10 times and every time was super excited. Yeah. And so while you were with him, you celebrated all 10 heads. Yeah. Whereas the other guy that flipped the yeah. 10 heads only saw the 10 tails. Yeah. And every time he flipped the 10 tails, he went, yep, there it goes. Yeah. Every time. Move on. Yeah. And then the other guy that's flipping heads keeps going. He knows every time I flip, I've got 50-50 yeah. shot. One of these times I'm winning. Yeah, yeah. Okay? So both guys are playing the game. Yeah. Both of them are. Which one do you want to sit next to on the bus? <laughs> yeah. Right? Right? Both of them are going to make this trip with you. Yeah. Who do you want to sit next to? Yeah. Mr. Heads and I'm excited yeah. or Mr. Tails and that life sucks. Yeah. I think that's where you see it with kids. And we have two boys. But yeah. That's absolutely. where you see it with kids when yeah, they get excited. Like, and people are like, well, I want to tackle into my inner youth and like, I want to recapture that. Just yeah, like, yeah. Just have that mentality. Sure. Like, when you go in to play Minecraft right. with your kid, yeah. seriously, it's that easy yeah. that you actually just play. Just do it. Yeah. Just play. Yeah. I have really gotten frustrated, and finally now, my kid knows that I will, as soon as I know I've lost, I'll forfeit. Yeah. yeah. And the reason why is because I was starting to ruin our relationship over this game. Yeah, yeah. I couldn't play it for fun. Yeah, yeah. I'm a very goal-oriented person. Yeah, yeah. My goal yeah, is to win. win. Yeah, yeah. I want to win. Yeah, yeah. I want to win every game I play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I realized that my goal is incorrect yeah. when it comes to hanging out with my kid. Yeah. It's different. It had to be a major shift. Yeah. And when you're a goal-oriented person that knows no other way to live your life than yeah. goals, yeah. it becomes very uh, a paradigm shift when yeah. all of a sudden my goals now have to change if I want to have a successful relationship with my son. Yeah. My goal now is the game. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. The playing of the game is the goal. Yeah. What are you going to do with the next hour? I'm going to play with my son. Yeah. Well, what are you guys going to do? Whatever he wants to do. Yeah. Well, is that going to be fun for you? Not if my goal is to have fun. Yeah. You're trying too hard. Trying too hard. You're trying way too hard. Trying way too hard. Trying way too hard. If you go into this with the objective of playing the game, yeah, I'm just going to play this game yeah. and just play it. That's why I like uh, I've incorporated um, more of the random movement stuff. I've seen practice. that. I love seeing your which content. Is, which the notion of it is. Because I get the kids get frustrated. Because mm -hmm. I train soccer kids and basketball kids and stuff like that. And yeah. they frustrated with them. And they're like, well, I'm not good at it. I was like, that's the point. Yeah. The cool thing is, and the thing that people don't focus on, is the notion of if you suck at it, you're actually gaining more. So if you Every suck time. at Minecraft, you're actually gaining the ability to play Minecraft better yeah. at a higher rate than your Absolutely. son who's better at it. Right? Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> and it's more quickly, right? So that's the learning process. You talk about the four stages. One, two, three, four. You go from unconscious and we actually I saw this on your thing. We teach this in Move Map. Okay, good. Yeah. So you got unconscious incompetence. Yep. That's a level where you've never heard of it before. You've never yep. seen it before. You don't have a clue what this means or yep. what it could mean. Now I've heard of it. I've heard of it. This is the first time I've ever heard of this thing. So now I'm aware of it, right? Yep. Conscious competence. There we go. So conscious competence. Or conscious Incompetence. Incompetence. You know you're bad at it. I'm, I know it's there, yeah. but there's no way I can be good at, about it, at it. I've just now learned about it. Yeah. So 
So then we go to a state where we know what it is, we are aware of the topic, and we're getting pretty good at it, right? We can tie our shoes now, and all we have to do is think loop, swoop, and pull, loop, swoop, yeah. and pull, loop, swoop, yeah. and pull. So we're getting pretty good. Yeah. Now when we're driving our car, hands are 10 and 2. So I'm pretty good, 10 and 2, 10 and 2. I remember now slowly, take my foot off the gas, start to apply it to the brake. I'm still having to think a lot at the stage, yeah. but yeah. I'm good. Yeah. I'm getting good at it, right? We want to get to the mastery level. Unconscious. Competence. That's the level where we're not even having to think about it, and it's flowing. It's flowing yeah. like, like everything works, yeah. right? You're not even having to think about it, and it's just coming out natural. This is where you'll see the, the easiest example. Now, we teach this in MoveNet, which is natural movement skills, which is the hope that you take somebody that doesn't know how they're moving so that they can do this and they don't have to think about it. But fighters, easiest example of it, right? You want to train them to the point where like reactions and stuff like that. Yeah, it's not a conscious thing. The reason that I like to write this out, the reason that it's so important is because whenever you're using this format yeah. and talking about goals, literally every stage in this is a failure. Yeah. Until you arrive at success. Yeah. Every stage of the learning process is a failure after failure after failure until you start succeeding. Yeah. Yeah. You've got more failures coming your way. Yeah. Way more. And it reflects back to what we were talking about earlier, is that you're afraid that somebody's going to look at your failure and judge you for it. Yeah. And then that's actually what's stopping you. So you don't you have go to have through it. that. Yeah, you don't go through that process. You have yeah. to have the failure. You yeah. have to fall flat on your face and have people laugh at you. Yeah. That's part of, that's part part of the process. process. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I remember the first time I went in to do CrossFit. Yeah. The very first time, and I'm doing the toast of bar. Yeah. I looked ridiculous. Yeah. And a girl laughed at me. And I saw the, the owner of the gym, he turned around, it was CrossFit 51, I'll never forget. He turned around, he said, it's his first day. Yeah. And she just shut up. Yeah. But I remember feeling in that moment, I felt like, fuck you. Yeah. I really did. Yeah. When she laughed, I saw her laugh, and in my mind, I went, fuck you. Yeah. This is hard. Yeah. I don't care. It's yeah. day one. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I thought. When he said it, it reaffirmed my thinking. Yeah. It confirmed that, yeah, it is day one. Yeah. This is going to be difficult. I am failing at this, yeah. by the way. Yeah. By the way, I'm failing at this, right? Yeah. Knowing fully yep. and knowing that I'm succeeding at the same time I'm failing. Yeah. Knowing it. Yeah. Knowing I'm failing. Yeah. Knowing this looks awful. Knowing I look stupid. Knowing that everybody watching this is going, what are you doing that looks terrible? You're failing. Yeah. Knowing that all the while, while they don't know what I'm doing, I'm succeeding. Yeah. So, and getting close to the end here. Sorry. Right. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Yeah. Just to tap on all those points again. Right? Like embracing the failures. Don't worry about what other people are thinking about your failures, right? Because they're yours. Absolutely. Like it's my, I, Gary says it's my F. Yeah. Like absolutely. it's mine. It's not yeah. yours. Yeah. So no, why do you care? I'll take it. You can't judge it because it's mine. That's right. Right? And I'll brand it and I'll wear it like a Superman right. chest on my vest. Right. I don't give a fuck. Yeah. I love my Fs. Yeah. My Fs are why I have S's. Yeah. Exactly. Right? So that's the, the flip of that coin is that failure is going to lead to that. That's success, right. Right? So looking at that, Surrounding yourself with successful people, right? If somebody's bringing you down, ditch them. I'm sorry. I've had to tell my friends before, like, well, why don't we hang out anymore? It's like, I'm sorry, dude, you're a loser. <laughs> like, I'm sorry, that's why it is. But until you pull out of that, I, it, and there are some people that, that 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 phrase right there might be a wake up call enough for them for them to actually yeah. pull out. Yeah. Now, me personally, as someone who's a, a human, my main thing is going to be trying to find the thing that activates them, yeah. turns them on to change their world. Oh, yeah. So I'm going to look for whatever it is, the switch that's going to flip them Oh yeah, them it's off. the same thing that we do in the training stuff. Yeah, that's well. right. what, how can I get you Get going? you flipped yeah. on. How can I flip your yeah. switch to where you'll start putting that content out. Yeah. Start doing that thing that it is you know you have to do. Yeah. You have to fail at yeah. a bunch. All of us, all of us inevitably, and this is um, a great way to end up because we do come to the end of our life. All yeah. of us inevitably are going to take our last breath. Yeah. We are going to sing our last note. They yeah. are going to tap us on the shoulder and say, hey, the party's going on yeah. and you're not, not invited anymore. Yeah. It's, it's time to exit. Yeah. And when you do, and I like to tell people this, at some point, someday, very soon, in the future, after you're gone, the last person who knew you will say your name for the last time and the last flicker of what you were on this planet will go away. And in that moment, all that will you will have had on your deathbed for your life is what you did with it. That's yeah. it. Yeah. That's all you get. Yeah. For eternity. The right. rest of it goes away. The crazy thing is, as a, as a comedian, but you brought up a, a good point, which is that you're dead more than you're ever alive. That's right. Way longer. And people are acting like, I love it because they look around and it's like, people are acting like they're coming back. Yeah. It's like, dude, you're not coming back. Like, why and here's the that? thing, 
to. And here's the thing that I want you guys to realize is that all we have is the now. All we have is the now because your experience, your legacy that you plan to leave isn't real. Yeah. There isn't a legacy that remains that is the real person. Socrates, we don't know him. He left us a legacy, but I don't know him, and he yeah. no longer exists. Yeah. No more. He is no more experiencing life than anybody else. Yeah. Mike, uh, or, or not Mike, Muhammad Ali is no longer experiencing life, yeah. and one day his legacy will be gone. Everybody who's ever existed, Alexander yeah. the Great, his legacy remains, and yet it slowly we forget who he is until one day his name will no longer be uttered as a relevant name yeah. in humanity. We slowly begin to slide into irrelevance. Yeah. So you better live for today. Yeah. <laughs> you better yeah. because you're sliding into irrelevance every second. Yeah. So you better live for right now because it's what you got. Which is, don't worry about <laughs> what other people think. What other people and whenever they criticize your yeah. failures, how does that matter in the grand scheme of eternity? It doesn't. And it's hard because you have to reframe that for people. You have to show them that. That's so, right. yeah, we're going to end it with that. Yes. Thanks, James, for doing Thank this. Thank you, dude. Thank you so much for me. Look at the there. description box. Go subscribe to this channel. Go to the Facebook. Um, and you guys, I'll tell you right now, if anyone is considering hi hiring Steven for uh, MoodNap for Nutrition, he is one of the uh, most intellectual, uh, well-researched people that I've ever met. He's very learned, very self-educated, as well as collegiately educated. And those are two things that, for me, as far as when you're looking for an expert, if you can find someone with either of those uh, experiences, backgrounds, and their own personal journey uh, with the GI tract and the stomach issues that this guy has had, if you want to know how to get your health on point, you contact Stephen Morales. I'm telling you right Thank now, you. you're one of those people yeah. that I forever will look up to and respect. As an expert, it, where uh, nutrition is concerned and movement yeah. is concerned, you're an absolute expert. Thank you, man. Thank, yeah. you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you guys so much for watching. Check back soon for more videos. Like I said, check his videos out. We'll probably be doing more of these also, so look forward to those. Hit the subscribe button if you want to continue to follow along Absolutely. with all that stuff. And thank you guys so much. And the bell. Ring that bell. Come on, man. Get a notification every time Steven's content comes out. Ring that bell. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys.